Saratoga Springs. The judge sentenced McGlashan to six months in jail, a $5,000 fine, and ordered him to pay $25,000 to support local animal shelters. New York Senate Majority Leader Joseph Bruno announces today that 350 more state health department workers will be moving to downtown Troy. Exactly where has not been determined. That answer is expected in the next 60 days. The move itself will happen later this year. Bruno has now transferred 1,000 state jobs to the Collar City. The Saratoga County town of Malta continues to grow. State Farm Insurance says it will add 400 new jobs over the next several years. The company also says it's looking to build an additional office building at its complex near Northway Exit 12. More than 1,000 people work at this State Farm site. City of Schenectady is getting federal grant to clean up petroleum contamination at the former Lads gas station at the corner of Erie Boulevard and Union Street. The city will turn the property into a parking lot and a green space. An offer from the parents of John Benet Ramsey to meet with police has been rejected by their attorney. The Ramseys negotiated the meeting secretly, offering to answer questions and review evidence. Hundreds of thousands of people lined the streets of downtown Denver today to greet the Super Bowl champion Broncos. Players and coaches rode atop fire trucks and buses. Fans started lining up as early as 8 this morning. Banned NBA basketball star Latrell Sprewell is in Portland, Oregon at this hour for a hearing on his future. An arbitrator will decide whether the NBA and the Golden State Warriors unfairly punish Sprewell for choking and his threatening to kill coach P.J. Carlissimo. Now more details on our top story tonight. President Clinton trying to stay focused on tonight's State of the Union address while attention remains focused on the White House sex scandal. Andrea McCarran reports to you. Say one, one small thing. I have nothing to say. President Clinton's personal secretary, Betty Curry, left her grand jury appearance amidst a swarm of media. We have no statements. Now, just let us pass. Also at the U.S. District Court to deliver documents was John Whitehead, the president of the Rutherford Institute that is helping Paula Jones in her sexual harassment lawsuit against the president. Whitehead was expected to hand over Monica Lewinsky's sworn statement given in the Jones case, in which she reportedly denies having an affair with Mr. Clinton. Lewinsky's lawyer says his client's mood is improving. Oh, she's very, very, very well. She's uh, quite strong now and uh, feeling better. The, uh, the isolation was relieved yesterday because she had contact with human beings. First Lady Hillary Clinton appeared on national television, defending her husband and calling the attacks on him a vast right-wing conspiracy. I think that when all of this is put into context and we really look at the people involved here, look at their motivations, look at their backgrounds, look at their past behavior, some folks are going to have a lot to answer for. Independent counsel Kenneth Starr is taking issue with the First Lady's comments, calling them nonsense. And some lawmakers agree. They say the president's problems are personal, not political. Andrea McCarran, ABC News, Capitol Hill. Joining us live from Washington for tonight's hot seat, Congressman Mike McNulty, and that's in about five minutes from now. Also making news tonight, 350 state health department jobs moving from Albany to Troy. As Dan Levy reports to you, what's seen as a win-win situation by some people is considered a big loss by others. Sometime later this year, the workers at this building and this building on Western Avenue at University Place in Albany will empty out. State workers are happy right where they are. Why do they got to move us? The main reason, according to Senate Majority Leader Joe Bruno, is that moving the workers to either the Headley Building or the Troy Atrium makes economic sense. And it isn't a question of patronage. It's a question of saving money for the state. Saving about $200,000 a year, according to OGS Commissioner Joe Seymour. More importantly, according to Health Commissioner Barbara DeBuono, the Center for Environmental Health will be consolidated. This center is one of my most important centers, one of my most important programs in the health department. We will have staff from every element of our environmental health program now together under one, under one roof for the first time. When that happens, it will mark the third wave of new workers in Detroit in the last two years. In 1996, 300 Labor Department workers came over. Then in November of 96, 350 Health Department workers came. With 350 more expected later this year, that brings the total to an even 1,000. I think it's significant. Uh, again, it's hard to measure. You don't see it in... Uh 
uh, an immediate impact on retail uh, uh, sales. But many businesses have already seen an upswing from previous worker influxes. Harold Calters from the Troy Pub and Brewery is more than appreciative with this latest news. It's absolutely wonderful. Even though people on this side of the river are obviously delighted, over on that side of the bridge, not everyone is happy. Albany is still the state capital, and I think any moves predicated just on the sake of moving are unwarranted and unnecessary. Albany County Executive Mike Breslin sees it as a continuation of geographic patronage. The pattern is just too clear. Every, every time there's a shift, there's jobs moving from Albany County. But Democratic Assemblyman Ron Canestreri argues as long as the jobs are staying in the capital region, he doesn't think it's to the detriment of Albany. Reporting to you, Dan Levy, News 10. And when asked if other local communities like Schenectady might soon benefit from state job transfers, Senator Bruno answered, stay tuned. And so we will. And we will. And we hope you will, too. Still to come, a woman arrested for stealing from you. And Steve Caparizzo tells us about a brush with an ocean storm and our prospects for snow. Live, John McLaughlin. Tracy Egan and Chief Meteorologist Steve Caparizzo. News 10 at 5 o'clock will continue. We report to you. Coming up, Chief Meteorologist Steve Caparizzo with your exclusive Doppler weather forecast. Question, answer, getting right to the point. Newsmakers in the know on the hot seat. And joining us tonight live from Washington, D.C., Democratic Congressman Michael McNulty from Green Island. Congressman, thank you for taking time out from what must be an incredibly busy schedule down there tonight. What is going on in Washington tonight after what's happened this past week and the State of the Union coming up in just a few hours? Well, Johnny, really the town is paralyzed just talking about this one subject. And uh, I have been saying that what the president needs to do is tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and answer all relevant questions to this matter, or else it's not going to go away. But he, hasn't, he hasn't done that yet. What he did yesterday is not enough. His statement yesterday is open to interpretation. He can't make a 30-second statement, walk away from the microphones, and think, think everybody's going to live happily ever after. That's not going to happen. Congressman, we don't expect him to say anything about it tonight during the State no. of the Union. How then will you and your colleagues react? I mean, it, it sounds like almost that if, if there's a large show of applause, that it might almost sound like there's support for the president. And certainly some no, people don't, don't want to support him. No, I don't think so. He has the right tonight to deliver the State of the Union and to outline his vision for the future of the country over the next year, over the next three years. Uh, and we can react to those specific issues. Uh, my only fear is that most people aren't going to be listening to that message uh, because there is a more important question that they want answered and that won't be accomplished tonight so we have to go through this uh, i think we'll actually be discussing the substance of what he says tonight at a later date uh, once we get this other matter out of the way and the president has to come forward he's the only one who can solve this situation who can put it behind us uh, there only there's only one other way for it to happen that's for ken starr to do an expeditious uh, investigation and wrap this thing up. Congressman, you know, the chances of that happening are slim and none. You know, he spent $30 million in three and a half years on Whitewater and proved nothing, so he's not going to help us. The First the Lady, president she needs, goes The on, President needs to answer these questions. Congressman, the First Lady, she goes on television today, she says that this is a vendetta by Ken Starr. She says that there's a right-wing vendetta against her husband. Obviously, you didn't buy this, you know, that wasn't enough information from the President yesterday. Right. Uh, but what about other people in Washington? Are they accepting this, uh, What the, the version of the uh, Clintons? I don't think so, Johnny. Johnny, let me say this. There are a lot of people out to get Clinton. I mean, I will admit to that. I think Starr is one of them. I don't think he's independent by any means. But that does not excuse the alleged behavior of the president if indeed that did happen. Uh, he still has to answer those questions. Okay, I know you've got an incredibly busy night ahead of you. I want to thank Congressman Mike McNulty for joining Thanks, us John. live by a satellite Thanks, from Jim. Washington. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you. Well, today's check of the news zone starts in the Fulton County city of Johnstown, where police have arrested 36-year-old Jean Rote for allegedly stealing more than $10,000 in food stamps and other public assistance. They say Rote lied about her husband's disability benefits. Now to Massachusetts, where Governor Paul Salucci unveiled his budget proposal today. The $19 billion plan includes tax cuts and increased spending for education. It will now be reviewed by the Bay State Legislature.
And in Rutland, Vermont, Home Depot may build a new store at the Rutland Mall on Route 4, but some people living in the area are concerned the home improvement giant would drive these small mom-and-pop stores out of business. And coming up, police close the books on a case involving the disappearance of thousands of dollars. First, today's numbers from Wall Street, the Dow Jones posting solid gains. It was cold this morning. Some of us slept until it was bone a little warmer. Yeah, it was a bone chiller. Uh, you know, the temperatures were way below zero. And if you were I like... I yours rattling. Yeah, oh, the, yeah. <laughs> and as you get older, like we are, they rattle a little bit more, don't they? <laughs> they do, indeed. <laughs> hey, I want to take you down south where they had cold weather and uh, some snow of all things once again in parts of North Carolina. This is that big storm we were telling you about yesterday that will be heading off the coast. And look at these folks. I mean, we have a tough time driving. Mm -hmm. They drive sideways when it <laughs> snows a few inches. But the mountains of North Carolina picking up as much as four to six inches of snow. And that storm, uh, bears watching. It looks like a miss, but it's going to be a close call. Let's check outside right now. We have uh, mostly cloudy skies, a few breaks, and uh, 23 degrees. A northeast wind at four miles per hour. Let's recap that uh, bone-chilling cold this morning, and it was more bone-chilling as you headed up into the north country. In fact, these are some of the coldest temperatures we could find. Official temperatures uh, from the uh, weather spot is Gloversville, minus 4, Indian Lake, minus 15, 19 below, just off our map in Newcomb. It was 8 below, Glens Falls, Whitehall, Rutland, Springfield over in eastern Vermont, and Bennington in Bennington County, three degrees below zero. Relatively speaking, it was four above here, so it made it feel a little bit warmer, right? Right. Here's the uh, northeast satellite uh, loop this evening. And we have a uh, weak weather disturbance moving in. It's a warm front, mild rear, trying to move in from the Great Lakes, producing these clouds over us. There's the northern fringe of that storm down south with rain and, of course, snow in the mountains, as we showed you. The northeast regional radar shows some flurries off to the north of us. Nothing steady, nothing heavy. This is mostly rain, some snow in the mountains of western Virginia and in West Virginia. And again, it may brush southern New England. I don't think it's going to get this far north. 23 Albany, 25 Burlington, 7 still at Messina, 37 degrees at uh, New York City. Here's the national uh, satellite loop, and take a look at this storm in the southeast. This thing is really spinning around and it's going to be a major ocean storm when it gets off the east coast tomorrow and again it may have the tendency like all the storms have done this year to track a a little bit closer to us so i think that'll keep us in clouds uh, much of the day tomorrow a little bit of sun in the afternoon and here's that huge storm with the rain along the coast from uh, boston to cape cod maybe to new york city and it may be cold enough for a little wet snow on the northern fringe of that storm and again the jet stream later this week is going to take a bit of a nosedive through the great lakes and this may pull down some cold air later friday into the weekend as the cold air comes in uh, we may have to deal with a little bit of snow friday and friday night all right this evening mostly cloudy flurries off to the north teens to near 20. cloudy tonight scattered snow flurries around not a big deal whatsoever 12 to 18 so It'll be much warmer. Morning clouds, a few flurries tomorrow morning. Again, early, scattered. Then some afternoon sun, if we're lucky. Don't hold your breath. Uh, 31 to 36. Here's your five-day forecast. Clouding up on Thursday. Some rain or snow showers uh, Thursday evening, 36. And a pretty good chance right now of some light snow or snow showers on Friday and some light accumulations, 32. Then a quick shot of cold air moving in uh, for the start of the weekend. We, of course, will have uh, much more on that forecast for you on the 5.30 newscast, but that's the way it looks right now. I hope it doesn't change. I hope so. Thank you, Steve. Topping tonight's follow-up file, Columbia County officials have closed their probe into the theft of $38,000 from the Germantown Fire Department. Investigators th say 35-year-old former treasurer Evelyn Schneider embezzled the money to pay her personal bills, not for gambling or drugs, as rumored. She committed suicide in September by jumping off the Rip Van Winkle Bridge in Catskill just after being interviewed by police. Ned Abbott's newsroom in Troy may be a step closer to getting its lotto operation back up and running. A judge has ruled that the state cannot suspend the store's license without a hearing. The owner lost his lotto machine after being accused of selling beer to a minor who later died in a car crash. The Albany School District has suspended 48-year-old teacher's aide William Strickland without pay. He's accused of making sexually suggestive remarks and overtures to several teenage girls. Up next, a phantom marks an anniversary. While a favorite toy goes high-tech.
Now, from near and far, from us to you, the people, places, and things in the news. People in the news tonight. First up, movie director Steven Spielberg, who has been nominated once again for the Director Guild's highest award for his work on the movie Amistad. This is the eighth time that Spielberg has nom been nominated for that award. New Year's celebrations are underway in the Far East. In Hong Kong, thousands of people ushered out the Year of the Ox and dressed in festive costumes welcomed in the Year of the Tiger. Tomorrow is the official beginning of the Lunar New Year. They were also celebrating on Broadway in New York City, the Phantom of the Opera, marking its anniversary on the Great White Way. Phantom has been one of Broadway's most successful shows since opening at the Majestic Theater. It's raked in $335 million. One of the most popular children's toys around is going high-tech. Lego says it will now incorporate computer technology in a new version of its legendary building bricks. The new smart bricks will contain a microcomputer so children can build their own robots. The new toy should be available by next Christmas. What timing? I just got used to the old Legos, you know. One thing you might need to keep abreast of the White House sex scandal, that's a scorecard. And on top of that, the media can't seem to decide on a name for the story. Jeannie Most reports to you. It is a story that cries out for sensitivity, tact, restraint. But no wonder everyone is in over their head with these headlines. I mean, when the president goes on television for some uh, educational announcement and ends up saying, I didn't have sex with this woman, hello! You know. Marvin Himmelfarb writes the headlines for the Fox News Zipper at the network's Manhattan headquarters. Ben Never has the Zipper been more aptly named. Zippergate, aren't they? That's well, what I Well, I think Corrado started that one. Oh, I just came back from Washington. There's certainly everyone's calling it that, and that's... The home of Zippercade. And while some raise eyebrows with the lowbrow approach... Clinton's internal affair. The major networks are claiming the high road. Investigating the president. The president under siege. Crisis in the White House. Who needs catchy titles to hook viewers, say those who follow the media? The story's big enough to sell itself, but you don't... A, you don't need that hype. And B, those clever titles can be dangerous. All the president's women more or less assumes that the charges of sexual misconduct in this story are true. And I think that's pushing it. It's pushing it, pretty, it's pushing it a lot. Oh, come on, say those who believe a sex scandal deserves a light touch. It's a writer's dream, especially a comedy writer's dream. After all, Marvin once wrote for Fantasy Island. The plan! The plan! At least they can't subpoena the president's fantasies. Whoever thought that Watergate would open the floodgates? Even the French are calling this sex gate. Those sick of the suffix can only hope it will be final gate. A reporter said tonight the scandal's a lot like Watergate. Watergate, you think? I think it's more like tailgate. <laughs> It used to be that the mainstream press might mention oral in terms of hygiene, not sex. Now even New York Times columnist Maureen Dowd is coining terms like oval sex. It's enough to make you abstain from the press, but the ratings have skyrocketed. When people start banding about terms like fornigate, even zippergate, certainly is in questionable taste. Um, but you laughed probably the first time you heard it guilty. <laughs> Don't say that word around the White House. Jeannie Mo, CNN, New York. I'm not so sure people are ready for clever little titles for this thing yet. Well, it does have got people's creative juices flowing, at least yes. in some circles. I guess. Mr. MOS is always creative. He asks about acceptable forms of protest when we come back. And chicken manure. Stay with us. Remember yesterday we had the story of Charles Collins, the man who sprayed chicken manure all over the State Court of Appeals building in Albany. Believe it or not, there are a few, just a few people who find that appropriate. Here's tonight's Mr. M.O.S. There are a lot better ways to express one's displeasure at things uh, without having to uh, foul the air, so to speak. Yes. I think if he's uh, if he's trying to get custody of his child back, it's a pretty stupid way about going about it. If thoughts are, he's probably pretty ticked off about something, and sometimes it does. It takes something like that to get somebody's attention. What are your thoughts about somebody who does something like that? I think he needs some help. <laughs> and you think chicken manure is okay? 
as long as no one's going to get hurt by it, I guess. It's one way of protest. Is there ever any occasion at all when spraying chicken manure is proper, is, you know, acceptable? Uh, no, I really, really don't think so. I think that's uh, sort of um, violent. Oh, I thought that was pretty disgusting to do that, actually. Are there any other buildings in Albany you can think of that maybe chicken manure would be more suitable for? <laughs> more appropriate? <laughs> I don't know. Not really. You really do, don't you? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and I don't believe that was the right way to go. Hold the chicken manure. Yeah. Hold off on it. <laughs> We're talking to folks about the guy who uh, sprayed the chicken manure all over the Court of Appeals yesterday. What are your thoughts about that old thing? You can't make chicken out of chicken manure. <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking about about chicken manure. I wonder. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Leave him wondering. Thanks for joining us tonight. Remember to make a comment about the news. Call 1-800-888-WTEN. Now to report a news story, call our tips line, 462-WTEN. Here now, Elisa Streeter with News 10 at 530.